Newcastle are kind of giving us a lot of food for thought at the moment. Some very eye-catching rumours flying around. Um, the most prominent being a move potentially for Manchester United's Nikita Paris um, in their push to kind of reach the WSL. I mean, Newcastle obviously newly promoted into the championship. Rumours are coming from uh, Tom Gary. Um, I mean, we... Tom Gary is a friend of the pod. We both have so much love and respect for that guy. He's obviously the nicest man on the planet as well, so that helps. Um, I do... I, I'm always very tempted to trust what Tom Gary is saying in terms of, like, the transfer moves that are happening. And also, we've just seen Newcastle, obviously make a really big statement signing in Demi Stokes from Manchester City. Like, we know they've got a bit of budget behind them. We know they've got a bit of backing. We know they have these big ambitions. We obviously don't know, I think, a lot about how they're going to be in the championship, but we do know that they're going to have very quick ambitions to make it to the WSL. I don't know whether this year is way too soon, It, but it could happen. But I think... But also the championship is so hard. It's so competitive, yeah. <laughs> That's the other issue. But I think if you're making statement signs like Nikita Paris, Demi Stokes, maybe others to come from the WSL like you are really setting out your stall of what you want to bring to this year um, and we saw something similar I suppose when Manchester United first formed in the championship they brought in big names everyone was pro they had Casey Stoney at the helm and within that first year they completely smashed the championship to pieces and were in the WSL so it has been done before but do you think I mean what do you think about the move for Nikita Pratt do you think it makes sense for her to, to sort of drop down to the championship when we've kind of seen all these like conversations happening about her sort of like getting back into the England setup like do we think it's a yeah it's a it's a difficult one I feel like it's a bit of a crossroads situation like you know I remember she was obviously linked to Courage who was interested in her and at the end of last season and that was turned down um you know which is that could have been a, a, a lot of money um playing over in the NWSL another challenge as well and then she stayed she was on the bench for games like the FA Cup final stuff like that where you're like hmm you know what could have been, mm -hmm. and now it's a potential to Newcastle. And I guess you're going to look at that and think, if I go to Newcastle, could I? Could that still help me get back into the Lionesses squad? Or could she go and be key number nine, get game time? You know, it's it's a difficult choice. I can understand why they'd be interested in her. You know, and I think with Man United bringing in Turland um, and keeping hold of Mallard on a, on a permanent contract, you know, maybe that's the nudge that, Keats might need but you know maybe she'll go somewhere else mm -hmm. maybe it won't be Newcastle it's a it's a, a tough choice but I can understand why they'd be interested in her and I always find these like these kind of rumors funny where it's like this team are interested in this player and it's like well I'm sure they are I'm sure they'd love to sign Bon Matty like but does not mean you're gonna get them you never know but, um, <laughs> well <laughs> Newcastle have the money um we're still kind of yeah. waiting on the edge to see sort of if there's any movement from Kira Walsh and if I see Kira Walsh yeah. signs for, New for Newcastle I'll absolutely lose my shit <laughs> Well, look, I think I think it is a bit of a crossroads moment for her. So it'll be interesting to see where she ends up, whether she stays. I'm sure United would want to keep her, but whether they can, that's another question. I think it's that, isn't it? I mean, obviously, you know, Spurs, we did, we were waiting to kind of see what was going to happen with uh, Grace Clinton. It now looks like really like, well, she's she's gone back to Manchester United. That's going to be an interesting one to kind of see how she kind of fits into that team. I don't, it's really hard to say like what she wanted, have to, wanted to have done. I really wish you could have an interview with her to see like what... She Play the girl wanted to do, yeah, and like how she wants playing time. How skin is gonna gonna kind of gonna use her going forward, given the impression that she made at Spurs. So yeah, that's gonna be an interesting one as well. But elsewhere in the WSL, Liverpool are closing in on signing Gemma Evans on a permanent deal from their rivals at Manchester United. If the transfer goes over the line, Evans will be the second addition uh, to Liverpool so far. The defender made twelve appearances for United last season. Do we? I think Liverpool's defensive system suits her a bit more, Rach. Well, I just think she she might get more playing time, mm -hmm. which I think is important. You know, she's quite versatile. She can play central defence and full back. Liverpool, you know, three at the back, she can slot in there. We saw last season when Taylor Hines got injured, like having another player back in there who can who can play that position as well is key. Um, and like when she played for Reading, she was one of their best players. So I'd like to see her get back to that level again. Um, and that just requires playing time because I think at times at Manchester United she really struggled. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd like to think under Matt Beard she can she can flourish hopefully. No, I absolutely agree with Rach, but I think we've got to touch on uh, a very big another. <laughs> 
WSL Lever uh, to add to the club. Um, NWSL have snapped up uh, Katie Zellum. She's going to head off to Angel City. Rach, what did we? I was going to say, what did we the make of the announcement? Move, but I was going to say, what did we make of the announcement first off? Because that was oh um, it was a beautiful voice. I'd set the context. It was a was beautiful it? voice note that sounded very much oh, yeah. like it was Katie Zellum. I think everyone knew it was Katie <laughs> Zellum. And then they kind of dropped it. Was it Thursday or Friday last week? And then there was just radio silence. Um, it was the weekend. They weren't picking up their business phone their business messages so that was a monday morning thing was it yeah so it kind of sounded like katie had gone to angel city hi it's me and then no one really responded the entire, entire weekend out of office on <laughs> and then she was Listen to your voice notes lad. literally announced yesterday um which obviously i mean that's a massive move for her angel city are making moves i do feel like that's going to be a really lovely like place for her to kind of like i don't know be in a club setup that isn't so chaotic and slightly um intent on kind of yeah. destroying itself i suppose in a way um sure yeah I, it wasn't on my bingo card no um another good experience i guess for her living in la um what i did find funny though because i wonder like would nwsl fans know what like english footballers sound like and would they be able to pick out that's a Mancunian accent? I don't know that. Do you know what I mean? So like, it was an interesting way to kind of drop a player mm-hmm. and then leave people guessing. Obviously, the rest of us were like, "Ah, yeah, that's Katie." Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously. But I just wonder if the American fans are like, "Is she English?" Well, did Is you that? see the comments <laughs> in the comment section? I think Is like that Marta. It was about <laughs> was Marta. literally. I think ten percent of people like that's definitely Katie Selim. Everyone else is like, "Who could that be? Who could that? Who could literally?" And I was like. <laughs> Does it? Uh, who else? Who else would it be? Um, but no, I think that's a really good but, move for her. Yeah. Really good move. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, another team that has been doing some very interesting business in the transfer window. Newly promoted Crystal Palace are gearing up for their first ever season in the WSL. They have ramped things up recently with two big signings. They've gone international. Uh, India Page Riley and Ashley Weirden. Um, India Page Riley is a forward joining from PSV Eindhoven on a two-year deal. She scored seven league goals last season. She also impressed at the Olympics as one of New Zealand's stand out players uh two-time dutch champion ashley weird and joins from ajax also on a two-year contract she's a winger and has also had spells at fc 20 and montpellier um i mean this is kind of the first time that we've seen uh crystal palace kind of really branch out in a big way into the international kind of transfer market and obviously they have to kind of look at not only the domestic market but internationally when they're kind of looking at staying in the WSL and kind of maintaining that competitiveness and making sure they're in the best position I suppose to compete at the level that the WSL is now at but I mean Rach what do you kind of think of the signings so far I've got to admit in terms of sort of the players they brought in the calibre is obviously really really good um I don't know kind of who else Palace are planning on bringing in um I'm sure there's plenty more to come um you know there's some youth there which is good like they're they're young players so i think it's kind of looking at what range they can go for first of all mm-hmm. and whether they're going to kind of go for some younger players they're going to need to bring in some more experience you know standing out for new zealand at a world cup where they didn't play very well isn't you know a super high bar to be using as an example i'd say maybe looking more at her time at eindhoven mm-hmm. um would be better and i guess players like this will get more game time in the in Crystal Palace in the WSL. It's a new league as well. That's the other thing they're going to have to deal with. Is not just you know stepping into stepping up, but they're bringing players in now to a brand new league. Mm-hmm. That they need to get them not only got getting used to each other, but getting used to playing in the WSL. So there's a lot to contend with for Palace. They've had a lot of outgoings, but I do expect to start seeing some some names coming in in the next couple of weeks, um, and potentially some more experience. I reckon, and I think we might see a bit of movement from from players from other areas whether it's championship teams or Mm -hmm. whether it's other WSL teams I do expect to see a bit more experience I guess it depends on what Palace are offering and what their ambitions are Mm -hmm. maybe Nikita Paris to Palace (laughs) well why not you never know like you just you you literally don't know um yeah I think I'm I'm really excited to kind of see who else they kind of drop in this window because I got a feeling they're going to make they're going to be making some big moves um so yeah really excited to kind of like watch this space um for them but Let's finish off. We've got a lovely question in from Sonia who asked us last week, which team has had the best signings so far? I've, I'm trying to think. Can I go rogue? Oh God, how rogue? 
Not that road. Right. I don't. I think Everton have done some really good business so far. Okay. And I think last season we were so worried about Everton. They'd spoken a lot about their lack of budget. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some really shrewd signings that they've made. Tony Payne, um, Pereira, Hanukkah Hayashi from West Ham, mm-hmm. Mel Lawley, Beatrice Sari. You know, I think some really shrewd signings. You've got players in there who already have WSL experience, which is good, which will help settle. And then some really good additions. And I think given Everton's budget, they've been really smart. So I think for me, it's hard to just be like, that's the best team signings. Mm -hmm. But I just think they've done quite well in this window. And every time they announce a player, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, you know, well done. (laughs) So for me, that's who I'm going to say. Interesting. I'm trying to think. So I don't think there's been like one team that has made multiple signings that are absolutely incredible. I think it still feels a little bit too early in the window to say which team has had the best signings. Um, which specific player do we think are we most excited about? Who's really going to make a difference for the team? I think for me, I feel like watching what Mariona Caldenti is going to be able to do with Arsenal, I think, but obviously like they do have so much great attack and talent. But again, it feels like Jonas is going to have another season of trying to like, kind of like, do this combination or wait with these players or kind of like try and suss it out again. So I don't really think he's like helped himself in that way. And also kind of seeing, I suppose, like, yeah, Daphne Van Domselaar and kind of like how she's kind of like, I'm excited to see her kind of like, I don't know, just excel. I think she's come off the back of like, obviously like having great kind of international, um, like, performances. And I, I just, I just rate her energy, what she can do. And I am really, really buzzing to kind of see her in an Arsenal shirt. And have you seen the Arsenal goalkeeper kit? Like, it's just, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And their third kit, again, absolutely goals. But I, I will be buying those kits. I'm not going to lie. I will be buying those kits. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, for me, <clears throat> players I'm looking forward to, like that I think will make a difference. Um, and I've said this before, Elizabeth Turland at United, I'm intrigued Exciting. to see how she gets on. Firstly, will she get playing time? Mm-hmm. If she gets playing time, she's a player who can feed off scraps. She's a player who can turn average opportunities into goals. And I think that's where Man United lacked last season was creating good opportunities. So even if they're creating decent <clears throat> average opportunities, I feel like Turland is the type of player that can turn that into something mm-hmm. if she starts. So I'm excited to see what she can do there. Um, Ella Morris at Spurs I think Robert Villaham is very good bringing in young players and getting the best out of them and Ella Morris is a very exciting young player so I'm I'm keen to see if she gets playing time at Spurs and what she can do under Robert Um, and maybe just seeing someone like a Ruby Mace getting more game time at at Leicester Um, another young player who I feel maybe went big too soon and ended up not getting the time she deserved on the pitch so She's another one I'm excited to see play and hopefully get more minutes. All right, watch this space. 